Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna to show you how to take an image in Photoshop and round out the edges. It's a real simple effect, so let's go ahead and dive right on in into this. As you can see, this is our completed image here. We've taken an image that had normally, you know, the 90 degree angle edges and just rounded them out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reset the image real quick. I'm just gonna take these layers here, drag them into the trash can. And then boom, this is the image like you would have it when it's open. First thing to make sure of is make sure this is not a background layer. If it is, just double click on it and make it into a layer object. And then after that, we can add this effect. Okay, so to add this effect, we're gonna go over here into the toolbar on the left side, go down to the rectangle tool. It's probably gonna be the rectangle tool unless you've changed it. What we wanna do to change it to the rounded rectangle tool is just hold this down and you can see a list of all the different types of tools that we can use from this. We're just gonna go ahead and select rounded rectangle tool. Then up here in the top, we're gonna to see something called radius. That's basically how round you want the edges. So a smaller number means less round, a larger number means more round. I usually find that 75 is a pretty good number, but feel free to play with this and make it whatever you want. Okay, so after you've got the radius set to what you want, we're just gonna go ahead and take that and click it and drag it across our image here. Now you can take as much time as you want making this precise and exactly how you want it. Uh, it can even be edited afterwards. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it right there like that. Okay, so not exactly what we want right now. We kind of want this inverted. We want the image to be inside of it and we want this blue or alpha channel to be on the outside of it. So in order to do that, we need to go down to the bottom right over here and we're going to take our image and drag it above that new layer that we just created. Um, you can see that mine just has the effects open. Uh, that's not important. So I'm just gonna go and close that. Okay, so now that we have the image above the rounded rectangle layer we just created, what we need to do is link these together and basically make it so that the bottom becomes the mask for the top. So in order to do that, we're just gonna hold Alt on our keyboard. And when you do that, you notice right now, nothing's happening when I'm moving my cursor from bottom to top. As Soon as I hold Alt, you can now see that that icon changes when I get in between the two layers. It's that square icon with an arrow. When you see that, just click and boom. Just like that, we now have an image that has rounded edges. And that's all there is to this effect. I'm just gonna go over two other quick things that can make this image look better for certain situations. But if all you wanted was a rounded edge on your pictures, we're done with the tutorial. Okay, so the two things I wanna show you is the drop shadow and the bevel and emboss. Bevel and emboss is a great option if you wanna make your image look like a button or something like, like that. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to go down to the rounded rectangle tool. We can't use our image tool because our image is currently being cropped. So if we did a bevel and emboss, it would bevel and emboss the full image and you just wouldn't see that in this cropped area or this masked area. So in order to add that effect, we can go down to our rounded rectangle here, double click on it, that'll open up the styles and then we can see this bevel and emboss section here. If you don't have that section, it just means the effect hasn't been added yet. So go down here to the bottom left, click on effects and select bevel and emboss. So we're just gonna go ahead and activate bevel and emboss. And when I click on it, it's gonna be set to inner bevel. Now this is not a tutorial on how to use bevel and emboss. So I'm just gonna leave all the settings as default. Click okay. And you can see that bevel and emboss has been added. Now, just so we can see this a little more clearly, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a new layer. I'll drag it to the bottom. Then we're just gonna use the bucket tool here. And we will just put a dark blue on that just so that we can see this bevel and emboss a little bit easier. Now, if you are gonna use bevel and emboss, I recommend that you adjust your rounded rectangle so that it fills up the entire screen. The reason being is just that we don't wanna have wasted space and bevel and emboss is in an interior effect. So it's not going we don't have any risk of it being cut off. So I'm just gonna do that really quickly. Uh, you can do that by going to your rounded rectangle object here. If you hit control T, you can actually adjust the mask. So we're gonna bring it out to here, bring that up to there, bring that over to there, and then bring that down to there. So now we have a, oh, apply it. So now we have a nice bevel and embossed image here that doesn't waste any space and has nice rounded edges. Okay, so the other quick effect I'm gonna show you is going to be to add a drop shadow to this. That'd be great if you wanna make this up here that like it's on top of something. Um, now for that effect, we're definitely gonna to wanna to make that a little bit smaller, this uh, this mask, because the drop shadow is going to take up some of the room and there is a worry that it could be cut off, that uh, the effect could not be done by the end of our canvas. So what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna hit Control T again, 
and we're just going to bring this down a good amount just so that we really know we have enough space. Now, of course, you can spend as much time as you want making this a little more precise, but I just want to make sure that we have enough space. Then you can just click Enter, apply that transformation. And then in order to add the drop shadow, what I would recommend is go over to in the top, hit Window, go down to Styles, click on that, and then the little window that appears over here on the right, the one right next to the No Effect or No Style is this one, Drop Shadow. So if we just take that and drag it onto the rounded rectangle layer, not the picture layer, the rounded rectangle layer, hit OK, you can see that a drop shadow is added. Now, yet again, if we wanted to adjust that, you can double click on this, and you can see that it automatically adds three drop shadows in varying strengths just to make it look a little more realistic. Um, that's why I prefer this method over just going to effects and adding a drop shadow because then you have to do this all yourself. This is a really good starting point. Yet again, not a tutorial on drop shadows, so I'm just gonna leave everything as default. And you can see that now we have a drop shadow here. Then you know if we want to see how that looked on the actual alpha channel, we just unselect this layer or make it go away or make it go invisible. And then we can see how it looks there. And that is all there is to this effect. Like I said, it's a real simple one, but it can make your images really pop and you know look a little more, certain situations a little more playful. It can make them look like buttons. Uh, it's a real, real useful effect to know. And that's gonna do it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below or on our website at adobemasters.net. If you wanna see videos similar to this one, hit that subscribe button. I make a video, or at least I try to make a video every other day. All right, everyone, see ya.